Assalamu alaikum welcome to part 2 of IFRS 2 where I'll be solving all the questions of IFRS 2 so let us start with test your understanding 1 on 1st of Jan 2008 Liminal purchased a patent the fair value of the patent was estimated to be 3 million constitution transfer was 1 million on the purchase date patent had a remaining useful life of 3 years the fair value of one of the Liminal's ordinary share was 3.5 on this and 3.2 on 30th June 2008 discuss the current accounting treatment of the above in the year end of 30th June 2008 Eight. So as you can see, the consideration for the patent purchase was one million own share. You see, you also need to know whether you have to apply IFRS two or not. So you have to apply when the consideration is not in cash, it is in shares, equity. So this transaction you will be using IFRS two because you are giving one million of Limina's own share to purchase the patent. It's a share based payment. So you are using IFRS 2 here. On the purchase date, all vesting conditions has been met. So the transaction is accounted for in full. We know that patent is an intangible asset which is dealt under IES 38. Okay. So the fair value of the patent is 3 million. And so an intangible asset should be recognized for this amount. So this is not an expense. You recognize an intangible asset. Remember, we can uh, recognize an income, sorry, an expense or an asset. So this is the reason why I recognize an asset. It's not always expenses. So here we have bought the patent with equity shares, right? And that asset is a intangible asset. So we are recognizing intangible asset. And a 3 million credit will be to equity. So we debit asset credit equity, okay? But of this 1 million was in share. So that means 2 million will be for the share premium and 1 million is for the share capital. Because they told that you are transferring 1 million $1 ordinary share. So that means your share is one out of the fair value for 3 million. 1 million is for share. The other two is your share premium. And we know that patent is an intangible asset and intangible assets you should amortize. So the patent should be amortized over its useful economic life of three years. So what will be the amortization charge? It will be 3 million divided by three years into six months because on June. So this will be charged to profit and loss and expense, right? So this will reduce the carrying amount of the patent to 2.5 million because it was three, the fair value now you are recognizing you are deducting your amortization 0.5 so it is reduced to 2.5 okay so now let us go to test understanding 2 an entity has a reporting so this is for your equity settled share based payment okay an entity has a reporting day 31st december on 1st of jan it grants 100 share options to each of its 500 employees each grant is conditional upon the employee working for the entity until 31st december 2003 at the grant date, the fair value of the option share option is 15. Each share option is 15. So there are total 100 share options. That means 115, the total value of the share option. During 2001, 20 employees leave and entity estimates the total of 20% of the 500 will leave during the three-year period. 2002, further 20 leaves and entity estimates 15% of the original 500 leaves. 2003, further 10 employees leave. Okay. You are required to calculate the remuneration expense that will be recognized in each of the three years. This is a very uh, question which is very much aligned to your past papers also, right? If you see your revision kit questions and IFRS 2, you will see that most of the time they will ask you what is the remuneration expense and all. Because it's a remuneration expense, okay? So how are you going to get the total expense? It will be recognized based on the fair value of the grant date of the share option because this is equity settled. So we take the share option, uh, fair value of share option at the grant date, which is 1st of Jan 2001. Okay. And they recognize the remuneration expense as the employee services are received. That means after three years, they'll be getting this remuneration expense. That remuneration expense will be divided by three because they will be there for the three years giving the services. Okay. So we are calculating for the three years for December 2001. Okay. 
we definitely we have to deduct those employees which will not be there so whenever the employees are leaving we have to deduct that from the employees which we actually have because for employees leaving we cannot give them any share options we can only give share options for those employees who are remaining in the organization right so now we have to take 500 employees into 80 percent 100 options and 15 is the fair value this will be divided by three because for three years okay why 80 percent because they told that uh, Twenty employees leave and entity estimates that okay. So twenty employees leave. Okay, and estimate that a total of twenty percent of the five hundred employees will leave during the three-year period. So they are taking this after deduct twenty percent, you are left with eighty percent. Okay, so you are taking eighty percent, and you are getting this. So this is recognized as an expense, and also the credit will go in equity. Equity value will increase by two hundred thousand. Good. Go into the second year. Okay, just oh, wait a minute. Give me. Okay. So now we are going to two thousand to the next year. Now this figure is revised. They told 15% employee on the original amount. Okay, so on the original amount is 500 employees only. They didn't say. See, if they wouldn't have said original amount, then you would have you would have to take 580%. On that you have to take 85%. Okay, but they told here on of the original 500 employees, you have to take 15%. Okay. So here also. Twenty percent of five hundred employees. They have clearly mentioned that. So you are taking eighty-five percent because fifteen percent are leaving. That means eighty-five percent are remaining. Hundred options into fifteen is the fair value will remain same. And this is now two over three because one year went. Now only for two thousand two and two thousand three. Now you need to recognize what you have previously recognized in two thousand one, which was two hundred thousand. So the the increase in amount that will be recorded as an expense, which is two to five. Okay, equity will be increased by two to five. Okay, so earlier it was two hundred. Now you add this expense, it will be now this one. This will be the equity amount. Coming to two thousand three, a total of fifty, twenty from two thousand one, twenty from two thousand two, and ten from two thousand three. Total of fifty will leave during the vesting period. Okay, because when you come to this one, third year. You are not taking percentage. They didn't give any percentage. They only told for the ten employees leave. Okay. So that will that's fifty. So from five hundred you deduct fifteen hundred into fifteen and into three over three. From here now you deduct four twenty five because this is your amount of. Equity, right? You have previously recognized this, which you deduct. So this is your expense. Now, so your staff cost statement of financial position. How it will be in the st statement of financial position? It will come under other components of equity, and in PNL, it will come as a staff cost. So two hundred, two twenty-five, and two fifty. Okay, and other components of equity, it will be same. In the first year, but in the second year, you will be increasing this by two to five. So it's four twenty-five. This amount again, you will increase by two fifty. So six seventy-five. Okay. Now let us go to third. Now this is based on some market-based conditions. Okay. On first of January two thousand one, one hundred employees were given fifty share options each. They will vest if the employees still work for the entity on thirty-first December two thousand two. That means for two years, and share price on that date is more than five percent. So this is a market-based condition. On first of January two thousand one, what happened? Fair value of the option was one. The share price was three, and it was so that means share price increased, right? Is more than one, and it was considered unlikely the share price would rise to five by this date. Unlikely that they will not achieve. The ten employees left 
during the year 31st December 2001 and further 10 are expected to leave in the following year. So now, we know that the expense will be recognized based on the farewell of the option at the grant date whenever you are giving share options and all. Okay, and this will be spread over the vesting period that is two years. Two conditions are attached to the share based payment scheme. What are the two? One is the service condition that means employees have to be there for two years. Other one is market based based on share price that it should be five. But it's unlikely that it will be five at 31st December 2002. So although it looks unlikely the share price target will be hit, the condition has been fed in the fair option at the fair value of the options at the grant date. Therefore, whether you meet this condition or not, I have told you early in part one, whether you meet the market based conditions or not, you still need to recognize the expense because you can ignore this. Okay, and determine the charge to statement of property or loss. That means you're writing an expense. So the expense should be recognized based on how many employees are expected to satisfy the service condition only. The second condition you will look for that. That needs to be satisfied. So 100 will be there. 10 will leave this year. 10 will be leaving next year. 50 options. One is the fair value. You don't take that three. You only take the fair value and one divided by two in the first year. Okay. Which is 2000. So debit as an expense and you credit your equity by 2000. Now the fourth. On 1st of Jan 2004, an entity Blueberry granted share options to each of its 200 employees, subject to a three-year vesting period, provided that volume of sales in volume of sales increases by minimum 5%. That means during this three-year, volume of sales should increase by at least 5%. Maximum of 300 share options per employee will vest out of the. So they didn't, okay, they didn't give you the option. They just told 200. Okay, maximum 300 share options for employees will invest depending upon the increase in the volume of sales. So now, if the volume of the sale increases by an average of between 5 and 10% each year, then 100 share options. Okay, each eligible employee will receive 100 options. If it is between 10 and 15, 200. If it is uh, over 15, then 300 share options. At the grant date, they expected that the fair value was 10 and the increase in volume of sales would be between 10 and 15%. That means 10 and 15% means it is the second one. It is also estimated that total of 22% of employees will leave prior to the end of vesting period. That means before the vesting period, 22% of employees will leave. Okay, so the situations were as follows. So you have been given employees leaving in the year further lives before the vesting date annual increase in volume expected sales volume increasing over the remaining vesting period and average annual increase in sales volume to date calculate the impact of the above share based payment scheme on blue financial statements in each reporting period that means all the three years you need to calculate 2004 5 and 6 okay so for each Okay, fair value will remain same. Okay, this will be for three years, two years, and three years. Okay, and for each we have a note. So make sure that you refer to the notes before you understand how you got this figure, as well as this, because this all you automatically will get it, right? The equity. So once you get the equity, Equity and expense will always be same in the first year. When you're coming to the second year, you see how much this has increased from here to here. So the difference is this expense. And same for the third year, how much it has increased from 364 to 552. So the difference is the expense, 188. Okay. The rest of rest all you can understand. What you need to understand is how we got these three values: 174, 182, and 184. So as at this date, a total of 26 employees are expected to leave by the vesting date, meaning that 174 are expected to remain. Right? Because out of 200, see so total are 200, out of 200 if 26 are leaving. Okay, we'll see that, 8 and 18. So 8 will be leaving, 8 are before the vesting period 18 18 will be leaving so 200 because total employees are 200 okay so 200 minus 26 is 174 
Blueberry estimates that average annual growth has will be 14%. Okay, so they are eligible for 200 options. We'll see that. So 14%, okay, the 14%, okay. And 14% is between 10 and 15%. So that means it's 200 options. So now you'll see how you are getting 174 and 200. Likewise, we have to do for the other two also. Here, 18 employees will leave. 8 plus 6 plus 4. Okay. So this has already leave, left. You have to take this year also for 2002. Then this and then this. Okay. Now, what is their growth in the sales volume? It is sales volume increase is 16 percent the growth okay this is the increase part we are talking 16 percent so if it's 16 percent again is 200 options because it is between sorry it's over 15 percent then it's 300 options so it will be 300 options okay coming to the last one 16 employees will are leaving how This eight, this six, and this two. And what about the growth? It is again sixteen percent. So sixteen percent, so it will be same like before three hundred only. Okay, three hundred share options. Now coming to the five. Begin offer directors and option scheme conditional on three year period of service the number of options granted to each of the 10 directors at the inception of the scheme was 1 million options were exercised but shortly after the end of the third year so upon exercise of the share option those directors eligible would be required to pay two for each of the nominal value the fair value of the option is estimated on the number of options okay so you have been given the rights is expected to waste on the fair value of the option for both all the three years at the end of the year three three million rights actually vested now what are you required to do a show how the option scheme will affect the financial statements for the three years b show the accounting treatment of the at the vesting date for each of the following situations the two situations first situation fair value of the option was five and all eligible directors all eligible directors exercise the option immediately Next, fair value of the option was 1.5 and all eligible directors allowed the option to lapse. They didn't exercise the option, that means. So, we'll see under the first one how share option will affect their financial statements. Financial statements, whenever they say how it will affect, that means you have to show what will be recorded in profit and loss and what will be recorded in the statement of financial position. That's what it means in under any standard. Because if any item is recognized in your profit and loss and also your statement of financial position then only it affects your financial statements either it improves it either it deteriorates it okay so let's start that means you have to find expenses and your equity that's what they meant okay so if you see equity and expenses seven eight and nine so you have to find out end of year one so end of year one it is seven end of year two it is eight end of year three it is nine you see seven eight and nine because actually they are vested and what is the fair value it will be fair value at the grand date 0 0.3 this fair value only at the start of year one only you have to take for the share option and this one over three two over three and this is three over three Okay, so expense and equity will be able to find out. Now, under one, all eligible directors exercise the options. And number two, no options exercise. So what happens when options are exercised? Okay, let us first find debit. We need to debit equity reserve when it is exercised because we have to give our shares and also cash. 
we need to credit our share capital and credit the share premium share premium is the balancing figure whenever there's a balancing figure when your debit side does not equate your credit side remember maybe there's a share premium because of a share premium because definitely on the credit side only one item is recorded which is share capital so if you want to balance the credit side another item will be share premium like in this case okay so share capital will be 9 into because 9 million right so 9 into 1 they are going to pay 2 for each share of 1 million nominal value okay so it will be 9 into 1 which will be the share capital coming to the debit side of it when you want to find in cash what did they tell the debtors eligible would be required to pay two dollar for each share of one nominal value how many shares nine so nine into two will be for cash so 18 okay next equity reserve equity reserve will be 2.7 2.7 million this one on the last date it's on the you need to debit that okay and credit 9 into 1 share premium is the balancing figure this is when options are exercised okay so when options are exercised from equity reserve you need to take out this equity 2.7 because that is at year 3 only you will exercise the option and share cap capital you are taking on that day 9 into 1 okay because that is the rights actually vested 9 into 1 in the end of the, at the end of the 3 year what if no options exercised then 2.7 remains okay this amount is recognized equity it remains you don't have to give up on equity because options are not exercised but they can choose to transfer this to retain earnings that equity if no options are exercised now this now we are coming to modifications they grant 100 share options to 500 employees they remain in the service for three years fair value of option is 20 each during year 150 employees leave entity estimates there are further 60 will leave during year 2 and year 3 okay now at the end of year 1 entity reprices you see reprices is share option so this is a modification when you are repricing your share option because the share price has fallen so other vesting conditions remain unchanged that they have to stay for 3 years and all they are they, uh, that is not changed at the date of the repricing that means modification date fair value of each of the original share option granted before taking the repricing into account was 10 the original this one the fair value of each repriced option option is 15 so during year 2 further 30 percent uh, 30 employees leave they estimate 30 30 more will leave and during year 3 30 employees leave calculate the amount to be recognized in the financial statements for each of the three years to the scheme this is quite simple okay if you are good in modifications you should know this what is the meaning of repricing definitely you don't have to write this answers i'm just for my explanation okay i'm just explaining modifications through this you also have to need the need to understand the theory part before you do calculations so repricing means your fair value increased it's like an increased remuneration now it's an expense your expense increased okay so your increased cost how do you find that difference it is the difference between the fair value on the original contract prices now up to the modifying price that is value of the option that means before and after repricing what is the difference in the fair value under the original the fair value was 10 but once you increase it it's 15 okay so at the additional cost that is 5 it is spread over the vesting period years 2 and 3 that means 3 years years 2 and 3 why 2 and 3 because after first year only you are doing modification initially vesting period was 3 years but after year 1 you, you modified so only for year 2 and 3 only it will be vesting okay so this is how you need to recognize it you first need to find out originally before modification what is the year one okay 
so let us do that if you see from 500 50 are leaving and 60 are expected to leave so you 100 minus 50 minus 60 okay 500 minus 50 minus 60 into 100 because 100 options into 20 into 1 over 3 because it will be initially taken over 3 only into 20 because the fair value is 20 yes it is 20 you have to take the grand date okay then you'll be having this it will be same coming to year 2 under original first you need to find original then incremental then only you need to find the difference immediately don't start using the incremental the new one so under new one it will be 500 minus 50 this 50 okay original how it they have left in year one estimated in year one you don't have to take for year two only in year one 30 and 30 it is this 30 and 30 okay it is this 30 and this 30 how much will actually live how much they've expected again 100 20 so this will remain same 20 and 20 fair value option at the grand date and this time is 2 over 3 using original you have not yet modified okay so it's 520 that means it has increased by 260 now you are doing the incremental approach that means after modification what are you doing this will remain same this will also be remain same only this two will change now this will become 5 because 20, 10 minus 15 the increase in fair value is by 5 and now this is 1 over 2 because over 2 years you are taking 2004 and 5 okay i don't remember is it which year 2004 or 5 they just told three years i guess yes okay they didn't give you the year now uh, which year but the remaining two years so it's one over two so it will be this and this okay that means it has increased you you add that incremental with year two original only okay so 520 plus 97.5 and same even your expense will increase to 60,000 plus 97,500 now we are coming to the year 3 here also we are going by original and the incremental approach so original 50 has left in year 1 30 has left in year 2 30 will leave in year 3 from 500 and this will be 100 and this will be 20 only fair value will remain same originally and into 3 over 3 when you are coming to the incremental everything else is same this is also same only this thing changes the fair value now it's 5 into 3 over into 2 over 2 that means it's 1 that's why they are not showing you see here it is into 2 over 2 so it means 1 only that's why they are not showing perhaps okay so you same approach is applied now let us go to 7th we are now going to cancellation and settlement an entity introduced an equity settled share based payment scheme on 1st of Jan 2000 for 5 directors under the terms of the scheme they will grant 1000 options to each director if they remain in employment for the next 3 years all five directors are expected to stay for the full three years the fair value at the grant date was 8 30 june 2001 that is one year and a half from first of jan 2000 they decide to base a share based payment scheme some profit target that's a non-market based condition right therefore they cancel the existing scheme on 30 june 2001 they paid compensation of 10 per option to each of the five director because they've canceled the option so now they have to pay the compensation of it to the director the fair value of the option at 30 june that means when you have cancelled it it was nine the fair value you have to explain with calculations whenever they say explain with calculations remember calculations they are using as a supporting tool not just mainly calculations you need to write answers by using your calculation how this could be accounted for So we know the share option scheme has been cancelled. This means that all the expense not yet charged through profit and loss. Sorry. This means that all the expenses not yet being charged through profit and loss must now be recognized in the year end of 31st December 2001. What you are going to charge after three years, over the three years, immediately together you are charging in 2001 now. 
immediately because you have cancelled it. So what is the total expense now? Total expense you have five director, thousand options into eight. The fair value at the grand date. Less expense. What is expense? Expense in the 31st December 2000. So this is an expense. Five director in 2000 same into eight, but over three years. So for the three years, this was the expense you need to take it, deduct it from the total expense. This is the expense to be recognized. Okay, so you debit the expense and you credit equity. And any payment made in compensation, they have made some payment for the cancellation, right? That is up to the fair value of the option is recognized as a deduction of equity. And any payment in excess of fair value is recognized as an expense. So how much they have paid the compensation? The compensation was They pay to the director for each option, they exited the fair value by one that minus nine. This was the fair value, and how much they paid? They paid 10, which they paid more than the fair value at that date. So it's one. This has to be recognized as an expense now. So expense of one per option should be recognized in profit and loss. How many directors? Five directors, thousand options into nine. This is debit equity. You are reducing equity by this because you are paying the fair value 9. Okay. Cash you are paying into 10 because you are compensating. You are crediting cash. Okay. Here it's just a difference 1 which you are writing as an expense. And finally, we are coming to last test understanding 8. On 1st of Jan 2001, they gave 200 share appreciation rise so this is relating to cash to 500 employees that they work for two years that is the condition they expect that 25 will leave 2004 20s will leave and they remember they expect that same number will leave in the second year also okay 24 employees leave during 2005. Okay. They vest on 31st December 2005 and can be exercised during 2006 and 7. On 31st December 2006, 257 of eligible employees exercise this one in full and the remaining eligible employees exercise this on 31st December 2007. You have been given two. One is fair value, one is intrinsic value. So you are required to calculate the amount to be recognized as a remuneration expense together with the liability the moment they say this you know it's a cash settled right not equity settled for each of the two years to the vesting date next calculate the amount recognized as enrichment expense reward and live in the financial statements for each of the two years ending this it's the same but the dates are different first one is for two years to the vesting date the other one is 2006 and 2007 you need to recognize the expense and the liability How do you start? Remember that you need to remeasure the fair value of the liability at each reporting day. Okay. So, on this and on this, two years. Okay, it will be one over two, it's five and two hundred. We know. Fair value will be at that date, it's five. And how many options? 200 of a share position, right? And the fair value, it's this one. 5. So from 500, you need to deduct 20 and 20. This 20 and the next 20 that will leave in. Same number will leave in the second year. So 20 and 20. 2 times 20. Next, 500 minus 24 minus, this is 200, this is 7 and this is 2 over 2. It is this fair value now for the second year. Okay, so it's 500 
minus 20 this 20 it is this 20 and this 24 so now the number of employees eligible for cash payment is this 500 minus 20 minus 24 okay because the question asked for 2006 and 7 so we have found till 2005 so we can use it for 2006 and 7 so this is the actual employees 20 has left 24 has left in the previous two years from 500 so we have 456 of this 456 only 257 exercises this one at this date so that means from 456 if 257 exercise at this date the remaining 199 exercises 31st December 2007 okay now you have to find out the year in 31st December 2006 so we need to calculate the liability brought forward this we need to bring it forward from 2005 31st December 2005's liability which is this 638 400 okay next is your cash payment it is 256 are eligible into 200 options into 7 because for 2006 that is that is your first thing you have to use this as the opening oh, sorry uh, not this it is the intrinsic value you have to use 7 so you are using seven it's a deduction from your liability next this is a balancing figure okay profit or loss you need to find the liability carried forward so 199 okay into 200 into 8 this will be the closing that means it will be brought forward for 2007 so out of 456 257 exercised that means cash payment the balance is a liability 199 okay and for and it's eight okay it's this the fair value of liability so for fair value of liability we use fair value and when we have to use the cash payment we are using the intrinsic value okay and for 2007 this opening will become the closing uh, sorry this closing will become the opening balance for the next year and for this now this will become 10 it's 199 only same 200 because whatever the liability is here now will become your cash payment 199 to 200 but the, this will change because this is the intrinsic value for 2007 which is 10 okay it is this and both are same you see both will be same so that at the end there will be no liability your liability has to be nil at the end okay so it's into 10 and this is the balance and figure so your liability will be nil it should like go like this because your fair value and your intrinsic value was same so that's it and i hope with this now you have a very clear understanding of hyperis 2 it's a new area and you must definitely do questions on it so see you in the next standard next standard will be the com the continuation of hyperis 9